Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Francisco, California for VMworld 2014. This is the wrap up of day three wall to wall coverage. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle and Dave Vellante, my co-host and, and co-anchor here, Stu Miniman. Been filling in, getting the data, doing some interviews. I'm Martin Kasai. I just posted your selfie, by the way, up on uh, Twitter with uh, Martin. Guys, wrap up. Um, really great event, uh, Dave. I got to say, our fifth year at VMworld. Operations have been smooth. It's, it's really been a great workflow, great set, great design all around us. Um, more importantly, the guests were phenomenal this year. Uh, people brought their A game, delivered great value, great data to the audience, great perspectives, great commentary, a little controversy. Um, and all the, all the senior execs, with CEOs, we had the VCs on, startups, it was awesome. Um, my take quickly, VMware's in transition on an offensive move. They have a great, great management team with the reorg. Sanjay Puna was just on talking about it. Pat Gelsing was highlighting it. Great management team, great messaging. They're staying the course. Still some work to do, but definitely in an offensive transition. What's your take, Dave? Well, I agree. I think VMware is in transition. I think there's a conventional wisdom out there that says that this company is under fire, the hypervisor is getting commoditized, they got to move up the stack, they're expensive, et cetera. But VMware's response is to go on the offensive. This company is an execution machine, you know, not unlike you know, its majority owner. Um, they execute, they're delivering to plan, they set out a vision, they bring in great talent. Um, we're seeing you know, the, the three legs of their stool, uh, software-defined data center, uh, uh, end user computing, and, and, uh, and the cloud come together. Now, of those three, you know, the big work still is in the cloud. I think they did a great job of you know, doing a, 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 a group hug, hug with Docker, sort of co-opting the whole open stack criticism, um, which I think is tact tactically fine. It, it sort of puts a little you know, water on that flame, but the big gap still is Amazon Web Services, but we just heard from Sanjay Poonin about the impact of AirWatch. I called it sort of the, I'm not sure it's the LeBron James, but maybe it's the, the Ray Allen, you know, when the Celtics got the big three. That's the it piece that was Bosch. missing. It could be Bosch. It could be Bosch, right. It's part of that it's sort of big three. It's not a Larry Bird-like move. Right, Michael it's not Jordan. a franchise player, but it's a very strong piece of the puzzle. So you're starting to see, you know, 30 to 50% growth there. That flywheel effect, as I say, the, the big news here was hyperconvergence. We called it, when Pat Gelsinger took over, he said hardware and software are coming together. Uh, it's, to me, Stu, VMware is engineering an Oracle-like hardware, software together with an ecosystem. Yeah. The difference is Oracle's all red stack, you know, basically kick out the ecosystem, all our own. VMware's doing that in an ecosystem style, nibbling into the well, ecosystem, but, you, Dave, but, you but the still with, 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 with a lot of leverage. Oh, before, so yeah, I want to just, just jump in there for a second. Do you notice that EMC World, Bill McDermott was on the big screen with Joe Tucci, Sanjay Poonin, SAP deal? Oh yeah. I mean, Oh, Oracle. very clearly. Very clearly, the, the you know, EMC is cozying up and has been cozying up to SAP. A lot of its internal systems, it's spending more internal money in SAP. Why would it line Larry's pockets any more than they yeah, have but It's already? open though, the open choice is AMC, uh, HP, I mean, VMware is pay, playing the open card. Yeah, you know, open is in the eye of the beholder, I would say. I mean, on the, on the spectrum of open, you wouldn't say that VMware is, you know, far to the left as, you know, say Hortonworks is. You'd have them, more to the right. <laughs> right. So, so, so Dave, you, got, you got Hortonworks and you got Oracle. I wouldn't even put VMware down the center. I would put them right of center in terms of openness. Um, I don't know, Stu, if you agree yeah, with that. Uh, so, so Dave, first of all, to your, your comment, convergence has been huge at this show. When Wikibon put out the first industry forecast on converged infrastructure two years ago, and we predicted that by 2017, about two thirds of infrastructure in the data center will be bought in some kind of converge. People thought we were way too aggressive. And if you looked at this I show, think we're, low. We, we're probably <laughs> a little bit low. It, it's happening fast, right. everybody's involved. Secondly, everybody seems to think, you know, well, VMware's just going to co-op the entire stack. 
but they're, they're doing a relatively good job of maintaining their partnership with their ecosystem, and it's co-opetition. I talked to you know, Nutanix and VDI with VMware. VMware still needs Nutanix uh, in certain pieces. They're making partnerships with Nixenta. Uh, they're still reaching out to lots of pieces because you know, at the end of the day, VMware's not going to be a hardware company. They're a software company. They need the hardware. Sure, they're trying to pull value out of it. As, as my premise has always been, they need to be the next Intel. Intel sucked functionality for the last 10, 15 years uh, in, in, into the stack. And, and Dave, I'd agree on openness. You know, the Federation talks about choice, and of course you can have any choice you want as long as it's in their portfolio. But Stu, the other validation <laughs> point is Nutanix raised $140 million, and just go looking at the numbers here, it's a five-year-old company. We've been doing the cube for five years. They've raised 13 million, 25 million, 33 million, 101 million, so 13 million in, uh, in now 2010, 25 million in 2011, 33 million in 2012, 101 million just this past December, and now another 140 million. That's a hyper-converged solution, total validation. Yeah, Judge on, I mean, huge dollars going in converged. I mean, let's not forget VCE, the company that really you know, drove a lot of this. Uh, last run rate I heard was $1.8 billion. NetApp, FlexPod still doing well. Cisco still owns a large piece of the converged market. Uh, I think in some way VMware's trying to pull some of that away from Cisco. There definitely is that give and take between Cisco and VMware. Uh, one, one of the, uh, the, the standout quotes for me is I interviewed a service provider this week uh, and he said, I'm a VMware shop and I'm a Cisco shop and I'm not going to really consider SDN until they stop throwing stones at each other. Well, so what, now, I got to ask you, Stu, what do you make of Pat's comment on the keynote of, uh, quote, we love Cisco gear. I mean, it's, I saw that as a clear attempt to deposition, you know, through you know, faint praise, uh, a major potential competitor, uh, you know, slash partner, but if you're Cisco, how do you feel about that? Yeah, well, well, Dave, of course, buy all VMware software and you can absolutely run any hardware and there's lots of Cisco hardware So what's out Cisco's there, so. response to that? They're not going to sit still, right? Chambers said bring it on. Yeah, what's, what's absolutely. What's the landscape look like? Where's so, that all going? Is that, there's, it's, this is by no means settled, right? No, absolutely, there's, it by no means settled. Uh, you know, ACI is uh, you know, the, the, uh, the attack from Cisco, uh, but ACI is still early. It's, you know, is it shipping? There's kind of pieces of it that are shipping and it's not completely well, done. What about NSX? As opposed momentum. to NSX, I mean, you know, Martin you know, really brought, brought some proof points. Customers are adopting it. John, I think it was uh, 150 customers uh, that, that, that currently have NSX. Uh, is what Martin said, yeah, and they, they actual run revenue. Rate. Dan broke six month, eight, nine, eight months ago. You know, Martin's in a P&L though, he's going to be pimping up his business, but you know. The, you know, those run rate numbers are funky, right? Because yeah, sometimes they're really lumpy. Oh, remember Extreme IO. Right? Right? You know what I'm saying? They have a one big deal and all of a sudden it's. Or backlog from preferred yeah, customers. Yeah, and who knows how they're counting it. You know, it's, 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 it's easy to play those types of games. We don't know yet. No, we no, he, I know. asked him that question. I said Extreme IO had the same thing. In directed availability, they were basically more revenue than pure on just on direct availability. So he said, no, there is a product market fit. It's not just one off customers. Right. Okay. All right, guys, well, um, any other commentary, Dave, you want to share? Day three, wrapping things up? Well, I think that um, it's interesting to note the conversation with practitioners. Let's talk about that for a second. Five years ago, it was all about how virtualized are you? Where are you? What, what, what's your journey look like? What percent you know, virtualized are you? Now you're hearing a lot more discussion about orchestration, about automation, uh, connecting into a multi-hyper uh, environment. The whole uh, Docker thing, the container thing is really interesting. You know, a lot more around mobile. I think the transition that, that these guys are making in terms of, of end user computing within the customer base is a lot more substantive than it was five years ago. So that to me is really the, watching the progress has been pretty astounding. I, I think the developer angle is interesting, Dave. This in-house developer movement, and Sanjay said, uh, you know, we were thinking back and forth, the IT of, consumerization is happening, and I think the developer angle is very much in play. The in-house developers are taking place. You're seeing that app-centric view dictating to the infrastructure, and that's, that's the big idea. So, um, I'm excited. That's a great wrap, guys. Uh, great Cube, this trip. Congratulations to all the guys here. Back at the ranch, Jeff, and the guys, Greg, good job. Uh, thanks for watching. This is a wrap of the Cube here in San Francisco, right after the short break, we'll be back. Keep watching, Tableau Conference, a lot of action. Look for theCUBE in Silicon Valley. Guys, thanks so much for hosting. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. That's a wrap from VMworld 2014. Thanks for watching.